Hi there, this episode of Pair Breakdown is brought to you by the 10 megabyte computer system from I'm Say. Yes, you'll be getting jiggy with it with an 8-bit processor, 64K RAM, a 5 and a quarter dual density floppy disk backup, and a full 12-inch monitor, all for only 5095 bucks. Get it now at your nearest Rexall Drug. Okay, so we now have a 90-minute documentary called How to See Sasquatch, uploaded by Impossible Visits, who writes, What happens if you spend many nights by yourself in known Sasquatch territory, waiting quietly in the dark? They will come to check you out. They will make their presence known. You can hear them, and if you're patient enough, you can eventually catch sight of them. This documentary chronicles my research over 13 years within a 13-mile circle in northern Vermont, where I was finally privileged to observe and film a Sasquatch at close range. I must say from the outset that this is very well done. I honestly enjoyed it. I do, however, have a tendency to take a skeptical view on these kind of things, and this is no different. I do think that the gentleman who made the video seems like a nice enough fellow and probably not intending to hoax anyone. Rather, he more than likely believes everything he puts forth in the documentary. That being said, I do have some thoughts. Now, throughout the video, he makes many assumptions about Bigfoot that has no relevance or evidence for. His opinions also have the same result. Let's take a look at some claims. He describes this as a little figure and an early morning visitor, something he has been waiting his whole life to see. I enhanced the footage later the best I could. We've got our classic conical head, two shoulders in view, a left arm, and this would be the left hand. He is seeing only what he wants to see. How do we know this isn't a crow? I'm not saying it's a crow, but why couldn't it be? Look at the size of it. It's not that far away. How do we know that it's just a part of something or something in its entirety? The fact is that neither one of us knows what it is. And yet he calls it a Bigfoot. Wood knocks and other sounds is also a problem. He has spent many months in this area, the same area, an area that is rife with human habitation. Some of these people probably know about this guy and his doings in the woods. Some of these people are probably also spending time in these woods. So I have to ask the question, how can we eliminate people as the cause of the return knocks, howls, and other sounds? Hell, at one point we can even hear an engine running or even unknown sounds made by common animals. And then there's the worn out claim of structures being made by Sasquatch. This teepee structure appeared just beyond the edge of our yard. One morning, I found my radio antenna bent back and pinned. It took me a while to realize that this was a dead ringer for one of their signature moves, a tree bend pinned down by debris. Looking for it. Now this is attached to the ground, so this here is not going to harm this tree besides I will have to trim some branches. But what I'm going to do is... Well, there are preppers, campers, people practicing woodcraft or learning survival techniques, and these people are in the woods. So I would say this is a real possibility. Now, he makes another claim about this dark area in the distance being a Sasquatch and explains it in this way. Trail behind my house, I once again picked up with my camera what eluded my feeble little eyes in real time. Just a handful of frames of what I can only assume is one of the local Sasquatch group. See this dark object appearing in the gap between two trees? In this frame, it is horizontal, while in the next, it is diagonal. His or her body is blocked, but for a split second, 
we can glimpse the arm. This is called motion blur, and that's all it is. The dark area is just a dark area. Here he uses someone else's video and claims to see a Bigfoot in the grass. Walking along the edge of her yard beside the tall grass in broad daylight and shooting video back over her shoulder. Reviewing the footage, she noticed a dark patch and zooming in, quickly realized it was one of her local group pressed against the ground on its belly. Astonishingly, for just a handful of frames, maybe a second's worth, the face is right out in the open. Great big nose. The right eye shows both iris and sclera, the white part. And it's a clear case of pareidolia, using his imagination to see something that just isn't there. If it was there, we would all be able to see it without his instructions. Now here's something interesting. A human size, human footprint. He may even know who made it. Who knows? He may have made it himself. We just don't know. Maybe someone is pulling a prank on him. Yet he states emphatically and rather matter of fact that it's a juvenile Sasquatch print. A perfect five-toed footprint in the mud bearing the exact traits of thousands of others found across North America. A textbook juvenile Sasquatch print. Nine and a half inches long by nearly four inches wide. A young individual. Now how many times have we seen things or figures of human size and hear the same old worn out juvenile Sasquatch claim? And speaking of juvenile Sasquatches, here is the story of the one climbing a tree. When I come up to this one particular spot, I'm startled by commotion to my left, something thumping on the ground. As if to get my attention. Hello? Hello? Are you here? Just staring right out at me. Not bolting like a bear cub, say, would do. Hello? And here is my enhancement. I think it's a little better. As soon as I saw the enhanced version, I realized that it was a porcupine. Here he is moving some leaves out of the way from our right to left. Or could it even be a wave? It's interesting that what he calls an elongated left leg, I call a tail. You can see it dragging its tail all the way up the tree. But that isn't the only reason. There is also this. Here he is moving some leaves out of the way from our right to left. Or could it even be a wave? Here he is moving some leaves out of the way from our right to left. Or could it even be a wave? Now I must give this guy some credit for going back to the scene and looking at the situation in daylight. He uses the estimated math method to gauge size of what he is now calling another juvenile Sasquatch. Now his size estimate indicates the leg which means the tail and look at the tree. Now how, how large do you think that is? It looks to me like we're looking down at the crown of the tree from this shot. Now at the crown of that tree we can see the top branches sticking out. And here's a shot of our guy crouched down with his hand on the top branch. 
Do you think the crown is more than like, I don't know, four feet off the ground? If he were to stand up, he would be looking down at the branches. And yet, it takes his so-called Sasquatch one, two, three, four poles to get up to that spot. And I would say it's no larger than a, you know, a porcupine. It sure looks like it climbs like a porcupine. Now, there was a lot of other things in the video, but judging from what I have seen, he just leads the viewer on to a trip to all of his faulty perceptions. Still an entertaining video. Thanks for watching.